Hey, we're going to do a little piece here for our parts specialists and uh, playlist on there. We're trying to add more videos on there to help people uh, think through the process of some of those things um, outside of just being a mechanic or a technician. So we're going to model this on kind of an unusual vehicle. Sometimes we get these things in. This is a Russian Euro uh, sidecar. And what's unique about this vehicle is that it has reverse and it also has two-wheel drive. There's actually a drive shaft. But we don't always know that as technicians. Does that make sense? So I'm going to model what it would look like to fill out a work order. We're just going to kind of play through this uh, with one of our students here, Lexi. So watch how I do this. Hey, good morning. Good morning. That greeting, it's super important. Get their attention that you're there to uh, service them. Um, what do we got going on today? Um, I brought my bike in to get it looked over, have some things checked on it. I uh, had one of my friends work on it. He's, he's kind of knows what he's doing when it comes to mechanics, but I just want to double check his work and make sure he did everything like he was supposed to. Awesome, that sounds great. We'd love to just professionally help you out. Um, I, I, I want to get honest here. I want to be able to tell you something, okay? We know mechanics here at Johnny's Power Sports. But uh, what, what I want to say is that this is a unique model. So what I'd like you to help me is uh, to not have to reinvent the learning curve on this sidecar bike. So if you could just kind of give me the key features of what you know about it. As far as checking out the mechanics of it on your fuel system, your drives or anything, I got that. But I would like to know anything about levers or switches since I'm not familiar with this model. Can you do that for me? Sure. Okay, here's the point that I'm getting at there. Think about this. And I'm using an unusual motorcycle here, okay? If, if the customer is like, oh yeah, you know, check my reverse, and you don't know where the reverse lever is, what, what, where I think people go wrong is they don't stop and just go, hey, I don't know how to operate this vehicle. You're not going to hurt your customer's feelings for not knowing every single lever and switch on their vehicle. Maybe how a parking brake works, you know. So let's think about this. ATVs, UTVs. It's one of the advantages when people take their vehicle to the OEM dealership. If you take a Suzuki to a Suzuki dealer or Honda to Honda, those technicians are working on that same equipment all the time and the, the owners know that and they know that they could probably get to it faster and uh, know how things work because they're going to get training on those exact models. But regardless, the point of this is to be humble enough to know that you don't know the features. It doesn't make you less of a technician. Uh, another thing that often works well, uh, even if you are the technician or you're doing some of the work, is to realize that a lot of people look at the service manager or the, the parts specialist and they don't expect them to know everything. What they want you to do and your whole do job is to take this information and be able to transfer it to the mechanics so that they can use their skills to do mechanical repairs. There's this weird thing in motorcycle mechanics, this is my opinion here and I think a lot of you are going to agree with me on this, is that we've got this weird like arrogance to having to know everything. Do you guys notice that or hear those stories? It's like, I mean you go to a car dealer and you typically have somebody that's a transmission specialist, they don't try to pretend to know everything about electronics or the engine or, or whatnot. So we need to break that habit and to get humble enough to say, hey I don't know all the features. Now I'll tell you what, if you're a good technician, and you're digging into your craft, you're going to be able to go grab a manual, break down you know, the information that you need, torque specs, how to take something off, how to put something back on, you'll get through it um, fine. I do not want to have to reinvent the curve and stare at this motorcycle or ATV for five minutes trying to figure out which button or lever I need to push to be able to get the thing to go in reverse and actually test what I'm supposed to. If you don't know how to operate it, it's going to be hard to, to satisfy the customer on is everything good on that. All right, as, uh, as we wrap up our work orders here, you can kind of take a look at something that we do here. We've just kind of started generically filling this out, but we definitely, you want to capture all their information. We absolutely need to get this VIN number. Uh, in Iowa here, uh, you can be fined if you don't capture a VIN number, so that's actually a law. And then, uh, just kind of fast forward here, you'll see where we started writing down the things that we want to do to this vehicle. And then I'll show you something that we do on the back side here. See where the notes are and how they're numbered? Here where it says clean and check the liner in the tank, everything I find for that is going to go here. If I find it's pulled, there's something wrong, you know, this is where I would um, capture those notes so that it makes it really easy. We even have a work checklist that I'll show you here in a second, and then a time card. So it's a very, very thorough work order. We like it a lot. The other thing here is that everything on here lines up 
like a uh, how we would do math. We would total all these. There's a total, and keep going down here so that we could uh, not have those problems with overlooking something. The other thing about this is that, uh, guys, help me out here. Uh, how many line items do we ever put on one item as far as something to do with labor? One. One. You wouldn't put on here adjust valves, air tires, check bike over. It's one item on here so it could be billed individually. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the other thing is it allows you to check it off. You guys know uh, how we talk about checklists here. And that means that I'm going to know if I had three different things on here and I'm just drawing one line through there, boy, I could overlook something in my list. So we'll, we'll do a filled out work order as well. And there's one last final piece that's super, super important right here customer signature. I want to make sure and get my customer to sign that work order so that there's no questions. This is a legal binding document. Uh, you guys here at the college, we take donations, but this might be an agreed estimate. Okay, so if you tell the customer, okay, I've taken a look at these things and I've got you know, three hundred dollars worth of labor. The the part parts are parts. It's usually not a big deal. This might be where you'd put that three hundred dollars in, have them initial it, so that you could take out any problems in the future on what you agreed on. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So in summary, uh, really good documentation, really good notes. Putting that stuff on the back to say, hey, when is this vehicle ran last? How old's the battery? Blah blah blah. You know, and then also you could make any suggestions, having them sign it and then get that customer out the door and then you get fixing it so then you can be profitable and give them what you want.